first seen the Senator from Plymouth and Norfolk, Mr. Hedlund, uh, signal interest in debating. Uh, we'll recognize him and then go to the gentleman from Bristol. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. It's uh, quite reassuring now uh, at this point in debate to see a turnpike corridor senator uh, in, the, uh, in control at the rostrum. We appreciate that. Good to see you up there, Mr. President. I would like to, uh, through you, address the remarks of a uh, previous speaker from Western Mass who has uh, departed the chamber, unfortunately. Um, when she talked about the condition of the roadway. Pike, it is a beautifully maintained road. I think the employees of the Mass Pike do a wonderful job. I expected to hear that rhetoric at some point in this discussion uh, about how great the condition of the road is. And uh, we've, we've heard that uh, part of the argument against the Romney uh, reform plan that was offered in 03. Well, it should be in good shape, considering it may very well be the most expensive stretch of road in the entire United States of America. It's certainly the most expensive stretch of road in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in terms of the administrative overhead per lane mile, in terms of the actual uh, maintenance expense per mile that is expended on that roadway. Now, I don't know how, I don't know if it's the best managed roadway in the Commonwealth, considering it's on the verge of bankruptcy, and which is why we're actually having this debate. So we fully expected that. The, the, the statistics are out there. It's documented. The fact is, very expensive road. And I would like to uh, just address, Mr. President, the comments of my, my good friend from South Boston, who after that uh, sparkling oratory is refreshing himself and hydrating himself after expending his vocal cords on, a, unfortunately, a little partisan uh, attack. Uh, the two, I think it was $2 billion to start with, and now it's up to $22 billion. The Democrats weren't in charge of that. This was, with, this was a project that was controlled by Republican appointees, controlled by a Republican board. But let's be clear that it's the Republicans that have been in charge of this project since 1990, essentially. The highway department, the transportation, they were the client, and they have, they have been uh, in control when all this debt was being accumulated. I was disappointed to hear that because up to this point, I think it's been noted by many speakers that this was a bipartisan problem that has gotten us to this point. I pointed out earlier in debate, Mr. President, we had not just Republican administrations. I will point out, by the way, that we like to say the Patrick administration has inherited this problem. Well, the Weld administration inherited the big dig. It took Governor Weld, it took Governor Weld, Mr. President, four years into his term to get control of the Turnpike Authority. It was holdovers from the Dukakis administration. So there's a lot of blame to go around. If we could talk about the insider connections. I mean, how much, sometimes we wonder how much did any of these elected officials even matter when we see kind of the inside deals that are going around. I would love to see my good friend from uh, New Bedford put away some of that diplomacy that he demonstrated earlier and actually name some of the names that we heard him allude to. I would suggest to the speaker from South Boston that they will be from a wide range of, politi of the political spectrum brought together by greed. Thank you. It has nothing to do with political affiliation terms of what has got us to this point. There's enough blame to go around. I pointed out earlier, Mr. President, that we've had legis Democrat, how long has the Democrats controlled the, the, the legislature? We've had Democrat chairs, and I tip my hat to the current chairman of transportation on the Senate side, but we've, I've been on the committee since I arrived here in the Senate, and I have seen chairmen who sometimes I felt thought they were representing the Turnpike Authority or representing some of the big dig contractors and not representing the taxpayers and the toll payers of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. They enabled the Turnpike Authority. The classic case, Mr. President, through you to my good friend from South Boston, I don't think he was here. I may have been in the House. I don't know where he may have been refereeing a football game at the time. I don't know. But in 1997, it was a sickening display of what I'm talking about, 
as to how the legislature, the Democratic leadership in the legislature, went into cahoots with a Republican administration to pass a sham financing bill because nobody had the guts, or most didn't have the guts, to say, you know what, we got to pass an increase in the gas tax to pay for this project if we really want to see the project to fruition like the previous Democrat administration wanted that preceded the Weld administration. They wanted the project. Okay, you want the project? All the downtown business interests, the real estate interests that wanted to see their property values grow, all the special interests that were going to be at the trough on this project, everybody that wanted it, and those legislators that were going to support the Weld administration in its efforts to commence with the project or finish the project, Nobody stood up and, and faced reality and said, we've got to pay for a, get this through a gas tax increase. Instead, we put an absolute sham of a bill, speaking to my good friend from South Boston through you, Mr. President, that was done by both parties. The legislature passed the bill. In fact, if you really want to get into, start peeling the layers off the history of this disgusting project, Mr. President, let's talk about who drafted the bill. The bill was drafted by Turnpike Council, a Democrat appointed in that position by a Democrat, a former Democrat state senator, by the way, who occupied my seat at one time, appointed by a Democrat governor who, by the way, has been recycled lately. He served on the Transportation Finance Commission, and he did good work on that, and I embrace what's in the Tra Transportation Finance Commission. But guess what? Yet another commission report that we're going to ignore. It talks about how to pay for some of these problems we have. We're going to ignore that one, too, just like we ignored the Blue Ribbon Commission in 2000, just like we've ignored the Mass Taxpayers reports. Put that on the shelf with it. But anyway, the person who drafted that bill, he's resurfaced again. He's just appointed by this Democrat governor to the Turnpike Authority Board. <laughs>